So this is Pix Insight, and here now you can see the uh, Process Explorer. Here are the iconized processes. Let's close this window a moment, I'll show you that again one more time. You can also group the icons into a favorites. The favorites is at the top. Let's click it and open it. So here are my favorite processes. Some of the processes do have documentation now. And more and more documentation has been added to these processes, but not all of them yet have documentation. Also, you can see that Pix Insight is a multi-space program. Here, by default, you have four desktops. I think you can um, guess by now, this is the H-Alpha that's open. And the folded images here on the left-hand side are, of course, the color images. We're going to work on the H-Alpha first. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply a quick screen transfer function. The screen transfer function makes a temporary stretch of the data. It doesn't really affect the data, but it allows you to see the data very easily, and very conveniently. Just press A there, and there you go. You get a quick stretch. It's also very easy to remove this uh, stretch. No data is uh, adjusted at the moment. It's uh, see it's a temporary stretch to allow you to view your data. In fact, if we go to the top here in a moment, we can see that we can turn it off. And there you go. Let's close this tool up, plot it on the right side. We're going to preserve the tool flow so you can see what's happening. Now we're going to make a permanent stretch. And to make a permanent stretch, we're going to use the histogram transformation tool, which is more or less the same as Photoshop. But this tool allows you a little bit more control. Select the image name, H alpha. Put the uh, real-time preview on. There you go, there's a real-time preview space. And now go and adjust the data as you would with Photoshop. Let's take the midtones and bring them down. And now you can see in the real-time preview that the cocoon has just started to appear. And you can see the data also appearing there on the left side. Drag the triangle, drop it on the image, and you've just applied your first stretch in Pix Insight. Now, by accident, or by luck, the markers are in a good position for the second stretch, because you can see it looks very nice there in the real-time preview. But Pix Insight allows you to zoom in using the scroll wheel on your mouse. You can zoom in and set the black point very precisely, remembering not to clip the background. There you go. And now your midtones. And again, you just simply drag the triangle symbol there, drop it on the image, and you'll apply your second stretch. And I think you'll agree that it's looking pretty nice now. You can turn the uh, preview off, but there you can see the cocoon with the fine outer nebulosity. The midtones are looking good, and also the background is looking pretty good as well with the stars. Now we're going to apply the same process to the other images. We'll start with the red channel. We'll open up the red channel. There it is. We're just going to pull it over to the center because as you've seen, the preview tool opens on the left side. Select the name in the histogram, the red channel, Put the preview on in a moment, just pull it over to the center, preview on now, and start adjusting. You can already see some of the red data already. Uh, again, the markers are in a reasonable position. Just move them over and set them very precisely, zooming in as you need to into the histogram. Let's let the midtones. Okay, instruct the triangle, drop it on the image. And there you go, we've now stretched our red channel data. We can fold this up and put it back away. Keep the desktop tidy. Same process to the green channel. Select the green in the Instagram tool pull down menu. Real time preview. Adjust the markers. So zoom in as needed, remembering not to clip the black point. Clipping the black point will make your background too dark and make your stars look oversaturated and bloated. There you go, slightly weaker green data as we expect, but nevertheless, that's the green channel stretched. We can close that and put the green channel back on the desktop. Pix Insight, this function of being able to close images to wrap them up like this really helps to manage a cluttered desktop, especially when you're dealing with multiple images, as we will be shortly. So now let's stretch the blue channel. Markers are too low. Set the black point first. 
set the midtones. Then take the triangle, apply it to the image, and we've just stretched our final image. There's the blue channel. Turn the preview off, close it, and let's put this image away. Now the observance amongst you will have noticed that the colour data is one quarter the size of the H alpha. This is normal since we tend to bin colour data and keep our luminance or H alpha data unbinned. All we're going to do now is do a dynamic start alignment. So we're going to align the color data with the H alpha data. So we're going to set the H alpha here as the master view. We're using views because all the images are open on the desktop. Otherwise, you could use files. Let's add the other images, red, green, blue, and say OK. Now we're just going to go global apply. And what PixInsight is going to do, it's going to go away and it's going to register the color data to the H alpha data. In doing so, it's going to automatically realize that it needs to double the size of this data, these images, to be able to match to the original H alpha or luminance data, if it was luminous for your image. You don't need to make any special steps to uh, double the image separately. This uh, image registration will take care of that. When the registered images are produced, as the red has just been produced, you'll see that they're prefixed with the word registered. And now it looks to be the same size as the H alpha. So PixInsight is now working on the, on the green channel. I'll be next. Here it comes. There's the weaker green data, green registered. And the final channel, of course, will be blue registered. Once we've got all our registered data, then we can start to generate our first color image. There's the blue registered channel. So let's close that tool, put it again on the right hand side, preserving the tool flow so you can see what we're doing. Now we have many images on our desktop, the original color data, the registered color data, and of course the H original H alpha image. So let's fold this data up and tidy it away. Let's put it underneath the original data. So you can see it really helps to manage image clutter or desktop clutter. Now let's find the LRGB color generation tool in the process explorer. In fact, it's just underneath there. There you go. No documentation, as you can see, for this tool, but it's pretty self explanatory how this works. Now, in this tool, we're going to select our reference images to generate the color image. So, of course, H alpha will be luminance data. Red will be the red data, but notice I selected the wrong red image. We need the registered data. There you go, red registered green registered, and finally blue registered. We're also going to select the uh, color uh, noise reduction, chromium noise reduction. This does a nice job when building these color images of keeping noise under control. Slide the saturation slider down. This is a little counterintuitive, but sliding this down increases the saturation. And then go ahead and hit global apply or apply global. PixInsight is now working away to produce our first color image of this session. Depending on your computer and uh, power and processors, of course, it will may run much faster or slower for you. Here now comes our is our first color image. Almost there. Here's the color image. Let's move this tool out of the way, put it to the right side, preserving a tool flow. Let's close this window. And there you can see our first color image. 
Now this is pretty typical of uh, these types of images, LRGB or H alpha RGB, where we spend a lot more time on the integration of the luminance or H alpha channel, and maybe one quarter of the time on the color channels. So you can see it is a color image, but it's looking rather weak. This, the cocoon nebula is looking rather pink or salmon in color. The stars are also looking a little bit weak in color, but nevertheless, the fainter image detail is there in the nebulosity and the midtones are looking good. The details are good, but it's just lacking, lacking punch. So what we're going to do, we're going to fix that now. We're going to select the red channel once we've closed this and moved it out of the way. We're going to keep this for comparison to see if our changes improve the image. So let's select the red channel and let's put it side by side with the H alpha channel. Uh, what we're going to do here, as you can see, the H alpha channel has uh, sharper stars. It's a narrow band image after all, but it has a much stronger nebulosity content for the cocoon nebula. And what we want to do ideally is just bring that nebulosity over into the red channel. And to do that, we're going to use pixel maths. Don't be afraid of pixel maths. It's rather easy to use. PixInsight gives you a nice interface for this. And the function we're going to use is max AB. As you can gather, max AB is going to take the maximum data from one image and apply it to the other. Sorry, I made a mistake. Double click it. Open brackets. Select the image, the reference image, H alpha. Comma. Select the second image, which is going to be a red register channel. Close brackets and say OK. Now drag the triangle tool and drop it onto the red channel. And there you go. That is a much better red channel for the cocoon. Let's call this a composite red channel. But you can see it's much stronger now. It's more or less equal to the uh, H alpha, which is our luminance image. And we should get better results with this channel now. Let's put the PixMath tool to the right side preserving the tool flow. All we're going to do is with the same settings, with the same registered images, we're going to go global apply again and produce a new colour image. PixInsight is working away on our new image. It's almost there, we're halfway. Here you go, it's nearly there. Here's our second color image and I think you can already see that's a big improvement over the original. Let's close that, preserve the tool flow. Let's put these two color images side by side. We'll fold away the red channel registered, fold away the H alpha. Let's bring the original color image up. Okay, let's zoom up on our new color image. There we go. And I think you can see already that's a huge improvement over the original color image. And we've not disturbed any of the other data in the image. We've uh, concentrated our pixel maths on the cocoon itself, which looks much better. One final task remains, and that is we need to tidy the image up. We need to crop it. We need to just get rid of the registration artifacts. The red image is seen there on the left side. So we're just going to crop. Let's take the image explorer and the crop tool and make that crop now. Crop works just like any other uh, process in Photoshop or other imaging programs, just drag a selection. You can make fine adjustments to that selection and then press enter and you've made your crop. Well, that ends our first Pixel Insight tutorial and I hope that you found it useful and interesting. Bye-bye.